Yeah, thank you very much, Kai. Um, yeah, so um, from the Arlington Bass, um, so a little bit about the Bass um, for those people who don't uh, know about it. So the Arlington Bass Club, we were founded in 1870, um, the Bass actually opened in 1871. Um, it's a swimming pool, that was the original um, uh, feature of the Bass, and then um, about five years later they added a Turkish bath, which we'll see some pictures later. Um, the, um, uh, the Bass Club is owned and run by its members, we're a non-profit um, organisation um, and we're cl located in um, Arlington Street in Woodlands in Glasgow. Um, I've got some pictures. This is um, from around about the turn of the last century, a um, picture of the Bass in Arlington Street. Um, this is how it looks today, that's looking from the other um, uh, end of the street. Um, this is the pool, or the pond, as it's kind of traditionally known. You can see the trapezes and the travelling rings that have been there since the, the bass first opened. Um, and this is the Turkish um, suite, which um, uh, you can see it's quite a kind of unique sort of space. <laughs> um, it's got um, this kind of beehive sort of shaped ceiling with these um, stars with stained glass in. Um, there's some of the stained glass, the coloured glass. So that's a lovely place to just kind of like relax and read. Obviously it's warm because it's the, the Turkish. Um, bath. Um, so our history group, um, we were set up in late 2016 um, to try and discover more about the history of the bass. Um, so basically any interested members of the bass can come along to the meetings, they're held about every two or three months. Um, I've got a sort of organising role, kind of quite informal though, um, and I also sit on the board of management of the bass, which is members, they manage the, the, the bass. Um, so when we started, we had like one leaflet basically, which was quite sort of dry and technical. It's about the architecture and development of the architecture of the, of the bass. Um, there were also kind of quite a lot of stories that would sort of circulate about the you know history, um, but we had no way of really knowing what was true and what wasn't. So one of our tasks was to try and kind of you know, come up with uh, uh, to, to to confirm some of those stories or not. Um, and we also were um, putting in a bid for Heritage Lottery Fund, and so we wanted to demonstrate that we are actually genuinely interested in, in the history of the, the bass uh, and its place in the city. Um, we're very lucky um, because at some point in the 1970s, somebody handed over a whole bunch of stuff from uh, records and archives and materials from the bass. They handed them over to the Glasgow City Archives in the Mitchell Library. So everything is there, um, it's very accessible, so it's very easy to go and look at the documents and you can see an example of some of the things that are in there. And we haven't had a chance really to have a look at everything because there's, there's so much of it there. Um, but obviously certain members of the group have their own areas of interest, so um, uh, they're keen to go and look at like, particular um, documents. So our first phase, when we first got started, was um, sort of really kind of discovery, just kind of getting a feel for what's in the, um, the archives, um, so, and the facts and the stories that you know, we could find in, in these documents. So there's a few of the types of our items. There's um, annual reports and accounts. That's annual report from 1892, I think. Um, there's membership lists. You can see this is a handwritten one. Um, so these are lists of all the people that joined. Um, you know, when they joined. Um, also, the proposal books um, include like who proposed them and who seconded them for membership. We don't, we no longer have that system, but obviously in Victorian times, that was that was the process people went through. So there's a lot of names um, of people who lived um, in Glasgow and nearby. Um, there's things like a few little news clippings. This is from the ladies' minute book um, about the ladies' swimming gala. Um, and there's things like competition and gala programs um, from the 1930s, one of the swimming competitions. Um, we're also lucky we've got some artefacts in the building as well. Um, so there's the War Memorial, um, which lists the names of 72 um, members who fought in the First World War and 39 who fought in the, the Second World War. Um, so, starting with all this kind of stuff, um, we sort of came up with a kind of overarching strategy as to what we're trying to achieve. Um, so uh, we want to you know, reveal the history, discover more about the history um, of the Arlington Bass Club, but as well as finding out about the history, because that is all, it's, it's interesting, um, we were wanting to hopefully use that to contribute to the future flourishing of the club, where, because we, we rely on members um, uh, for income, so it's really crucial that we keep members at a certain number of members at a certain level, otherwise we start to enter kind of difficult financial situations, so, which has happened quite a lot over the past. Um, so the Arlington Bass, it's, it's not only kind of a special historic building, um, it's a community of these members, of these people, um, and we were hoping that if we can find out more about these people and their lives and their experiences, um, we can help current members sort of feel part of that community, um, uh, stay with the club as part of a community, um, and also try and attract new members as well, and hopefully help the communities within the, the, the city as well to kind of appreciate the bass um, and appreciate the club. Um, so under the overriding strategy, we also had like specific objectives. Um, uh, so basically, you know, we need to establish the facts and fill in the gaps in knowledge about the history. Um, we wanted to enable members to feel you know, part of a special community. 
um, and um, to give us new ways to be able to engage with the local community, um, you know, to help people appreciate the bass and hopefully um, be involved in, in, in preserving it and supporting it. We're also lucky because we've got kind of all sorts of different angles that you could get involved in, I think, in the, in the history. Um, so to the building itself, there's obviously the architecture, the development, the expansion. Um, uh, it was originally designed by John Burnett Senior, who also designed, I think, the original Western Infirmary and the John McIntyre building on University Avenue and some of the other buildings in the city. Um, there's the people, um, as I've talked about, the members. There's men, women, and um, also children. Children joined the bath too. Um, so, and there's also the staff, the people who worked at the bath over these years. Um, so, um, the membership books have all these names, they have addresses, they sometimes have occupations of the members, um, and you can start to see connections as well when you look at them between the sort of family groups and the kind of social networks um, in the city with people proposing and nominating each other um, to join. There's the technology, which is, you know, there's, there's the pool or the pond, um, there's the Turkish bath, which dates from 1875, there's the heating and the pool filter systems as well. Um, we have a sand filter, which we'll see a, a little bit about later. Um, and the sport and leisure, history of swimming, um, history of Turkish baths and well-being and public health, um, and also water polo. Um, our first bass master, William Wilson, that's a picture of him there, um, he's credited with devising the rules that um, led to the development of water polo. So that's a huge area that we need to kind of get into and investigate as well. Um, so, having all this stuff, um, thinking about where we were trying to go, um, we, we, we established some like particular focus for our activities. Um, so we wanted to generate a new leaflet about the history of the bass, which turned out a Doors Open Day. I've got a few copies of what we actually produced here, if anyone wants to have a look. Um, hoping to generate more stories, better stories, more accurate stories um, uh, about the bass, and also use that information to update the website and, the wiki and Wikipedia. Um, we were keen to maybe record sort of memories of the um, members, the, particularly the older members um, uh, of the, the club. Um, um, and we did produce a questionnaire um, to try and sort of elicit people to respond with you know, their memories. Um, and we had an aspiration to maybe do some oral history as well, but we haven't really kind of got to that yet. But, um, but that's certainly one of the, the objectives. We've experimented with digitising the, um, the membership records uh, because obviously you saw the handwritten one there. There's lots of those kind of lists, handwritten lists and handwritten forms and also type with type, typed um, lists as well. But just kind of extra trying to extract some of that and put it into a, uh, a searchable, sortable kind of um, database spreadsheet. Um, and we had thought about sort of identifying notable members as a way of you know, helping people connect with the, the bass. Um, so with sort of short biographies of them and perhaps photos and images. Um, um, we've proceeded a wee bit more cautiously with that. We have found like some notable members or people that are sort of well known within the city of Glasgow um, who are members of the Bass, but we realised that it's a lot harder to find out information about the women than it is about the men. And so at the moment we've got a lot of men and really kind of hardly any women at all um, in that kind of like collection. So we'd be keen to, before we sort of do anything with it, keen to you know expand so we've got uh, more women, it's more representative of the membership. Um, so during this time as well, we were experimenting with kind of different resources and tools that we might be able to use. With this, I mean, we were very much at the start of the journey. We didn't necessarily have a great deal of expertise in what we were doing, kind of feeling our way, you know, trying to, to just sort of make it up as we went along a wee bit. Um, so um, we've established a Flickr account for photos, so that's where we can upload any kind of images that we find. We already had some old photos. Um, there's pictures from just around the baths of some of the, the, the um, uh, features in the baths and things like cups and things like that. So got the Flickr account, which means that people can share stuff. We've got a Dropbox um, to upload and share our documents. Um, again, we had a bit of like experimentation before we decided on that solution. Um, but that's kind of working out reasonably well. So as people find out stuff, as they're doing their kind of own personal sort of research, if they find things they think you know, need, that are interesting that they want to share, upload all of that information to Dropbox so it's there um, for everyone to have a look at and comment on and bring new perspectives to. Um, we're growing the catalogue. Um, we turned, we sort of created a catalogue, basically a spreadsheet of all the items that are in the um, uh, the, the Mitchell Library. Um, but we've also found some other items, and so we've been able to add those into the catalogue as well. So we've got a record of where everything is and what, sort of more or less what it is. So there's more work to do there. Um, and we were trying to also develop a timeline. We had an aspiration to make that an online thing. That's not happened yet. But we've got a word document which kind of is starting to list kind of big developments in the history of the bass, um, the date that those happened. Um, and and also the source from where we found that information. So we've now got a better idea of what's accurate and correct, um, whereas before it was just kind of stories and rumours. Um, so, um, and then of course people work away and then we get together every now and then to kind of share our progress. So things that we've discovered so far, we have found like new, new evidence. 
Um, these were architectural plans relating to the development of a billiards room in 1893. Um, uh, and these were, they were not in our archive, they're in the Glasgow City archives, but in a separate section, but someone um, in the course of research has, has found that. Um, so the things like that have turned up, which is great. Um, we have um, started to find new stories, which is, um, uh, which is wonderful. Um, these aren't actually members of the Bass, but um, it, we found a story in the, the latest minute book um, uh, related to the Scottish Women's Hospital, which these are members of the, the Scottish Women's Hospital um, from Serbia. This is from a, a diary that um, uh, a woman wrote about her time there. And two of our members also went to Serbia, um, it turns out, from the minute books. In 1914, Miss Ethel Perry and Miss Margaret Hutchison joined the Scottish Women's Hospital, um, which was a volunteer kind of medical organisation led by um, Elsie Ingalls from um, uh, Edinburgh. And they spent six months um, working as orderlies in Serbia. So it was just really lovely to kind of just come across this little mention in the, the minute books because they were the, minute, the, the people of the committee wanted to sort of honour them for their, um, their war service. So um, we found, we're starting to find little stories like this which are really exciting. So we created the new leaflet for Doors Open Day. Um, which has these kind of sections in it again so trying to just make it a bit more engaging so things like you know what did the swimmers wear that's the kind of thing that people always ask you know what did they wear in olden times and so um, trying to any little bits snippets of information we found out we've got we've kind of got in there um, and as I say happy to share some of the leaflets um, so we use this information as well to create new notes for the, uh, the tour guides at Doors Open Day so again they could share some of these stories as they're going around um, and make it a wee bit more engaging um, and we had good success in that this, this year we had almost a thousand people came um, to the Arlington Bass over the weekend and um, almost 40 people have joined as members so that's like an immense boost for us because that's just exactly what we need is that kind of income generation so um, we um, have also sort of think, thought about recording um, today's history so things are happening in the Bass now we're thinking oh gosh we should record that we're doing these things um, so just show you a wee snippet oops, um, of this um, this, we're very fortunate to have a member of the group who has a lot of video skills um, and he has been able to record. This happened during our shutdown, we do maintenance. Um, we have the, as I mentioned, the sand filter system. It's in the basement um, and it uses sand to filter the water from the pond to keep it clean. So we were doing maintenance on this and um, uh, John was able to interview the, mem uh, the engineers and um, uh, and get some footage of the actual maintenance as it went on. So I won't show you the whole thing because it's, it's too long, but there's the sand filter system that's in our, in our basement. It's a massive sort of steel. And the filter, good steel, but the filter you buy nowadays, what would be the same? I'll just uh, skip forward a wee bit so you can see some other cleaning it. Sorry, I'm just skipping through very kind of. We learned a lot about, about washing the filter. It was all very <laughs> kind of knowledge we never had. I know maybe you don't want to see this, but <laughs> now the pond is clean because of this process. So, um, <laughs> so these are very rough kind of like, you know, interviews and kind of footage and stuff. And we'll turn it hopefully into a more kind of like a shorter, more engaging kind of video that just tells the story of the, um, the filter, the exciting filter. Um, and it dates from, we think, from 1934. Um, John's just discovered um, uh, a, a mention of it in the minute books. So um, it is quite an ancient piece of technology. Um, but these are the sorts of things that we're now starting to do um, in the Bass, is trying to record these kind of events. Because these things don't last forever. You have lasted this length of time Oops. Um, oops, excuse me. Right. Um, another thing that's been a sort of spin-off from the Heritage Group is um, we applied for a little bit of funding for um, uh, from Book Week Scotland um, to put on an event, um, particularly because this woman, Jenny Landreth, has written this book, which is about the history of female swimming and women swimmers, and that's very pertinent to us, because we have had women members since 1872, um, so we're reasonably progressive. Um, 
so we put together this event, so that's happening in a couple of weeks' time. But as a result of that as well, other people at the BAS wanted to get involved in Book Week Scotland, and we've ended up with an entire sort of week's worth of programme of, um, of events um, happening. Again, we're hoping this kind of thing will bring in new audiences, raise awareness of us, um, uh, and basically just sort of raise our profile um, in the city. Um, there have been, you know, there are difficulties. It was mentioned earlier in the, the presentation that time, um, people are volunteers. That you know, they have jobs, they have families, so it's hard to find the time. Um, it's um, we need more time to sort of make connections. We've got all these membership books with all these names in, and there will be other institutions in the city who have these kind of similar sorts of archives. And we'd love to see if whether our members were members of the arts club or of the Rotary Society or the local churches and that kind of thing. But we're just yeah, getting time to make those connections. Um, and obviously money, it does cost money to produce things like leaflets. Um, so um, that's sort of you know, something that's always in our mind as to you know, how we can progress. Um, having said that, we've got you know, future plans. Um, we have got ideas. Next year, uh, we'd like to focus on the story of the, uh, the Baths in the First World War. We've got the names on the War Memorial. Um, hope to learn more about those stories um, and from the other sort of items in the archive as well. Um, carry on with the digitization of the membership lists, um, creating a kind of searchable database, hopefully, eventually. Um, a, we were thinking that we can use that information to also sort of do an online mapping project, um, so you can see how the patterns of membership have changed, it reveal a wee bit about the patterns of um, uh, usage of the, the areas in the city, perhaps, um, and also it's a resource for people studying their family trees. Um, and it'd be great to develop something like a learning resource, you know, where we can engage like with local with local schools. Um, but again, time and money for and, and, and expertise there. But it'd be brilliant to sort of think about that, perhaps in connection with the, the First World War as well. So that's the sort of projects that we've kind of got in our mind at the moment. In the meantime, we're doing as much as we can to just kind of share the story that we know so far, um, sharing it online at events like this and events in the baths. Um, and we've got these are some of the links for um, some of the resources that we've developed so far. So thank you very much. Thank you.